Good day, guys. It's Calvin from the Car Tune Company. I came out to a local wreckers yard the other day. Some guys call them dismantlers, breakers, whatever you call them around the different parts of the world. And I saw a bit of a distinctive vehicle that caught my eye. And it happened to be a high ace van that I converted to a V8 many years ago. Had a bit of a look at the suit plate. And the suit plate uh, says 2010. It does seem like about that long. It actually had the gear that came out of my own van that was written off many, many moons ago. One of my staff members was driving it. He got turned around on the open highway and smacked up the bum really hard at uh, 100 k's an hour while he was sitting stationary. And the other car smacked him in the back of the van and was bent all the way up to the windscreen. That was a bit disappointing. So I bought it back and the gear ended up going into this particular van. So let's have a bit of a look here. So there's the, the wreckers yard over here. This is a, a, a multi-brand wrecking yard. And here's the van. Now interesting enough, that's not the plate that this van was originally registered on. What really caught my eye was the, the big brake package on it. So this brake package is going to go onto a, another van that we've got in, in the work at the moment. It was a super custom high top. And it's, it was picked up. Motor's already gone. We'd converted it to manual with the with a big box, an R350 box. Now I saw this van driving around oh maybe a year ago. So I'm wondering what actually happened to it. It's got some shit in it now. There's another set of plates in it, which is a little bit suspicious for me. It had a set of mags on it, they're gone. I wanted the, the radiator out of it. So there's, there's the radiator. We'll grab the radiator from underneath. So she's been fairly raped, unfortunately. We're going to grab that secondary radiator, the air conditioning and the radiator under there as well. It's really disappointing. But we will raid it uh, for bits and use it on another one and some of the parts will live another day. Wait, actually, oh. So guys, we're back from the uh, dismantling raid on the high ace van. I'll show you what we got. We got the oil cooler for the power steering out of the front of it. I got the big brake set up. Now this brake, big brake set up was actually out of my own high ace as well. It's got the Skyline four pots on it. Uh, I was going to do an install video one time about how to make that kit. Uh, it was something I used to sell, but I've changed my mind on that really. Well, I just don't sell enough of them anymore. I've got too many other things to do. So I was going to share that information. I also got some wiper arms for the old Subaru behind me. That was another thing. And uh, I'll have a look on the trailer. So on the trailer, we got the radiator out of it. We also got the, the front air conditioning radiator, air conditioning unit. And the second radiator that's under there. And I forgot it had a pump in it, an extra helper pump for that radiator. I got some lines and overflow bottle and some other crap. I pulled the seats out of it, don't really need them, but oh, you never know. And a Subaru motor, which, which was the actual reason I went down there in the first place is to buy a motor. But a whole lot of other lines and bits and pieces. So, so we've got another high ace to do. Uh, I actually had a quick talk to the last owner, the guy I did the van for, and I didn't ever think he was going to sell it. Turns out he uh, handed it down to one of his family members, and it kind of disappeared, got stolen. He's not too sure. He's kind of pissed off with the guy who took it. He was helping him out into his own business, and uh, the motor was in. Well, something's happened. Motor's been taken out. Box has been taken out. Wiring loom that I made many moons ago has been taken out, and it's been thrown away. Um, ended up in a dismantler. The van doesn't notice we look crashed, so uh, and we did a quick search. We did a, on the plates that were on it. They were off a 2003 high ace. This one's a 2000. And, oh, it was a 94. So something dodgy's gone on. Doesn't really bother me. I bought the bits for another van. So my 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 next customer's going to get some some good bits that I know work, and um, it'll make me a big step forward on my next project. 
There's a bit of nostalgia. I, I grabbed the cert plate off it. It's no good to anyone. But uh, there's the, the Rego number that was on it. It certainly doesn't match with the ones that I saw in the video. And there wasn't much on it. Uh, see some calipers. Some different wheels. Manual, it actually had an R350 in this, this van, which and the replacement van that I'm doing now has got the same thing happening. And we've got a date. Back in 2010. Another, actually another interesting thing on this, that particular van, is, well, it was in my van, and I'll try and find a picture of what happened to my van, and um, then it all went into the, the Super Custom, and he lent it to one of his mates, oh, five years into the project, I think, probably, oh, now it might have been 2013, 2014 maybe, and one of his mates drove it until it stopped, it got so hot, that it actually stopped. And one of my parts motors, this one, uh, that's actually the, um, yeah, it is that one. It's that one. That's actually the block out of it. So uh, that's the block out of that van. I've done a fair bit on this old high haste. And uh, memories on my own van, what I did in, in 2005, I did my own high ace. And that was a great van. It was my work van. Had a heap of fun on it. But things went wrong. Um, and it got written off, unfortunately. But that's life. But just interesting to see what goes on with these vehicles sometimes. And uh, we will be doing videos on another high ace to come on uh, the conversion job on that. So we'll talk okay, guys. I've uh, managed to find some photos of my original van. Uh, yeah, it's, it was a bit interesting of a day. Uh, I took a few moments. I, I texted the, the owner of the van, and he didn't know it was in the wreckers yard. He'd lent it to a, um, one of the family members. It disappeared. They've, someone's obviously taken the motor and box out of it, computer out of it, and he was never paid for the van. When it, that kind of pissed me off. So when I get pissed off, I'm pretty lucky. I can just take some time off. I don't have work schedules most of the time, so I, I went and angle parked my little Suzuki, as you'll see in the first photo. And I actually came back and I managed to search through, and after a bit of consideration, I'm going to share with you photos of my very first the, the cartoon company van. This is the reason I do 1UZs. Okay? Um, if it wasn't for this van, I wouldn't be sitting here now talking about 1UZs. And it sparked that passion for them. So I wanted a van uh, because I was racing motorbikes at the time and I wanted somewhere to put my bikes in it. We could go there. But I didn't want something that was slow and gutless. It just would have pissed me off. And I did some searching, found the Lextreme Forum and all the guys on there, some of the original guys, and uh, thought that's what I'm going to do. Also met a real good mate. Uh, I bought the motor, and I bought a, a, it was meant to be a rear sump. I got a front sump. He was doing a Hilux. He got a rear sump. It was meant to be a front sump. We we met through the internet, exchanged sumps, and he kind of thinks like me. If he, if he turned up here today, he'd probably be able to find stuff that he's never seen before. He'd go, oh, Calvin thinks like this, and he'd go find it. So the cartoon company van was, was born. And I've got some photos of it. And well, let's, uh, I'll have a bit of a talk as we go through it. And uh, let's have, get into it. Yeah, so a bit of time in the bush makes all guys feel a bit better. So there's our high ace van. So when I first put the motor in, it still had the small wheels on it. And we had it all painted and sign written up. And this was my work van. I had the seats redone. There weren't a lot of high ace vans around with the Lexuses in in the, those days. Probably count them on a couple on your hands. Um, the G2 Link Plus was the greatest computer available at the time, and I mounted that under the seat. And I tried to make it look as standard as I can. Those wheels did come off, as you'll see in a later vid, later photo. And uh, keep an eye for that engine bay because I've got a photo of the other van, and you can compare it. Ground clearance was pretty good, uh, even though I'd lowered it two inches. And being my work van, you know, you did work van stuff. You drove to work, um, and you towed other vehicles, and I rode my dirt bike. So we put our bikes in it, and off we went. And uh, let's have a look at the photo of it towed. Yeah, there you go. 
sacked out, towing another vehicle. So I drove my van for about 30,000 k's, probably about three years. And then one day, it met with its demise. I must have given the guy who was driving it, he was a staff member at the time, and um, I'd probably call him a mate these days, we're still mates. So there must have been some forgiveness. Uh, I haven't shared these photos with anyone before, uh, so uh, let's have a look at them and I'll, I'll talk you through it. So what happened, Jason was travelling south in a passing lane and several cars ahead, someone decided that they would uh, stop in that passing lane and indicate across the northbound lane. Uh, the whole line of traffic tried to slow down and for some reason he ended up facing north, so spun right around in the northbound lane. There was a car travelling along the northbound lane and it smacked him right into the back end of that van. Very hard. It was bent up to the dashboard and it made quite a mess. But hey, he wasn't hurt and at the end of the day, vans can be replaced. So with the van all smashed up, we had a couple of visits from the police and uh, it, it did close State Highway 1 in New Zealand. So it was quite a serious crash. There were some injuries in the other party's car unfortunately. But the police went through their process and it was noted that there was, he felt that there was another car that had come up through the back of it. And we actually found a reasonable yellow paint mark on the back of the van. The car had come up, smacked him in the back and, and actually spun him around. And that's about the only way you'd end up backwards in the other lane. So he was uh, not charged with anything. And I was paid out by the insurance company and then bought it back because they didn't have a value for a V8 high ace van more than a normal van. So I was left with a whole lot of van parts. Customer contacted me and said, hey, you do high ace vans, Lexus V8s, what can we do? And the decision was made to sell it onto this customer. So it's a process that we've gone through putting it from my van into the brown super custom and now some of these parts are getting reused yet again into a van we're about to do so it's a bit of a deja vu for us but let's have a look at the the last uh, van just run through the photos and i'll talk you through them so this is what turned up a super custom high ace van and we hooked the motor out of uh, my van that shows the rear sump and the clearance to the front cross member and why you use a rear sump and it had been sitting for a little while, so probably a couple of years. So I popped the, the valve stem seals, popped the heads apart, gave them a tidy up. The block was just checked, and there's, there's the motor all in pieces. And we gave it a big refresh. There was a guy called uh, Johnny Five who had originally bought these headers for it. We re-wrapped them. He's since passed away. The old diesel motor came out. And van stacked up to try and fit the motor underneath it somehow. It's not an easy process fitting a van motor in there. You've got to turn it sideways. They're actually wider than the chassis rolls. It was rewired. Hey, I'd, I'd sold the G2 computer uh, in the time between going through. Um, so the original top throttle body manifold was see, that I was used out of my van. You can see I recessed it in. Took quite a lot of time doing that. And I was starting to build up my wiring skills that I have these days. So ran it through the center of the uh, air surge or under the plenum. Popped out to each injector. The motor's all cleaned up and tidied up. Another alternator was fitted. Um, Power steer pump, I think we went through that again. Uh, the, that's a good shot of the throttle body. And the remote oil filter housing was reused. That was all off my van with the big G... Oh, no, it was an R350 gearbox. So that was poked up into that hole. It had actually been in my van. And there's the, the gearbox mounted in place with the headers, showing that big headers can fit in a high ass van. Um, and it wasn't actually too loud, considering uh, we kept the main system quite, uh, quite small. There's your intake coming through back onto the factory air box. And it still made pretty good power, making sure the motors are nice and clean. Um, you can see the Sora type dipstick, which is the rear stump dipstick. 
and it's starting to take form at this point and we're looking it's looking a lot like my other van was looking but yeah a few late nights put in there's the computer mounted up in the the uh, b pillar so it got a new at that time g4 storm um, it was a pretty good system it worked pretty well there's a heap of motors behind that van there and there's that engine bay looking like it's meant to look there you go brown carpet it's looking pretty smart there's the finished high ace got the new set of wheels on it as well and uh, that was the, the second shop i'm not sure what that vehicle in the background is and uh, but the vehicle in the back of that that one is a 400 horsepower surf that i used to have turbocharged surf and let's have a look at those engine bays so that's greg's engine bay that's the super custom and that's my engine bay funnily enough they look pretty much the same so if you like this video it's a bit different to what i normally do uh and uh, you're doing one uz conversions or one uz stuff wire uh please like the video maybe subscribe to my channel and there's lots more uh, other information to come on one uz and one uz conversions so we'll talk to you later